left heart, look at the flag, and repeat after Megan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is Miss Stephanie back here. Now, the area flooded so badly, the surrounding area, that Sarasota County and uh, the Environmental Protection and all these organizations, Audubon Society, got together and they funded to take all of the soil out. It was originally a freshwater wetlands and it was filled in so they could grow celery. So this is, we all understand, fifth graders, what restoration means, right? So they restored this back to its natural freshwater environment. And today you're going to learn just how important that was to do the hike this morning. Because we're going to learn about the environment, the birds that we are, hope that we can spot, and try to understand why the birds are here and why this land has developed the way it is. So to do that, you're each going to get a pair of binoculars. Yay! You slip it over your neck with this little ball on the outside. Okay, so they hang like this. Do you see? Okay, then the first thing you need to do is put them up to your face and they'll bend. See how they'll bend like this? Because everybody's nose and eyes are in a different place. Then this knob right here, you adjust it with your finger. Once you have it fit in your face, you adjust it. You have to look away, don't look close. Look away to adjust it so it's clear, not fuzzy. All right? And then the thing to remember, when we're walking, don't be looking through your lenses because they're gonna make you dizzy in the rest of the trip. When we stop, <coughs> they always consider the swamp a wasteland. It's not really very productive and not useful to farming. So the first thing they do is come in and fill in all the swamps to make it flat so that they can farm and put other soil in there, replace the soil or put soil on top of it. So, that immediately changed the environment. Do you understand that? Because you changed the way the ponds went away and you changed the soil. 
it changed the whole ecosystem. Do you know these words? So what's going to happen if we change the ecosystem? What is going to happen? Yes, ma'am. The animals won't be able to live there anymore. Very good. The animals won't be able to live there. Which animals? The birds. You are really great. Okay, so she's saying the animals that would have lived in the wetland, which is what it would have been when it was swampy, aren't going to be able to survive when everything's flat and dry and there's no water. So they are either going to have to move or they're actually just going to die off in that area. Like if a bird lives on a fish and the fish die out, the bird won't have anything to eat, so the bird will die out. Perfectly. And what about other food sources other than fish or bugs? What other food sources? Down here. Plants. plants. What happens if we change the landscape? What happens to the plants? Some plants that need a certain kind of landscape die off. Perfectly. So do you see just by doing something that the pioneers thought was just a logical thing to do, they totally changed the environment and all the animals that would have originally been here died off or had to move away. Well this went on for over a hundred years and the family uh, kept the property for generations and they kept farming it and farming it and this became known as the celery fields because of the fragrance of the celery. You could drive, they tell me, you could drive down the interstate and you could smell the celery growing out here in the celery field. It's such a huge, huge area. <laughs> This is a frequent pass that they take. And so when they're coming up, you know, they're very big and they're very heavy and they have to climb. It's probably a struggle to find their way down. So we call it an alligator slide. It's kind of like a burrow, but it's on top of the ground. The leaves are shaped like my hand. The leaves are shaped like this. Big birds at the top. The big birds. Get your, get your binoculars out. What is that? Is that an osprey or something? Just hit nope, that one? Birds. I didn't see that. I'm looking over here. Look up high. Look up high. With your binoculars. What kind is it? It's a bird Beautiful. Okay, look at the blue. These blue ones flying. These are called glossy ibis. They're black. There's this beautiful place called the aquifer. Have we studied this? Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 And what does the aquifer do for us? Provides us water. Provides us water. So we really want to keep it clean and keep it pure. There's also fresh springs that go into the aquifer. And this is where our drinking water comes from. So if this pond gets contaminated, what else can get contaminated? The aquifer. The aquifer. Do you want to drink that water if it's no. contaminated? No. no. So this is why I was trying to make everybody aware of what fertilizer or the animals can do. Oh, those are his talons. Look at the spots on his back. What is that for? Camouflage. Camouflage. He can hide in the trees and bushes. It's dangerous to feed the wild animals because then they forget how to hunt and they get too comfortable around people, which can cause them to be in danger. Some people will hurt them.
tolerate you. <laughs> yeah. Take a look. Use your binoculars. Nice. Beautiful. Aren't they pretty? Yeah. Boy, they sure are colors. Beautiful. Okay. Rosie. Rosie. Rosie, it means rosy. Spoonbill because their their bill is actually shaped like a spoon and when they feed they put it down in the mud and sort of filter the mud for food. Now if you look over here on in the old days coal miners when they would go down into a mine would take a canary in a little cage and they would um, watch the canary because the gases are toxic but they don't have an odor so if the miners were down there they wouldn't know that the gases were building up until people started getting sick or dying so they would take the bird and if the bird fell off its perch or if the bird died they would know that the gases were building up and they would leave pretty sharp huh now fish are pretty slippery, so these talons are long for a reason, and there's there's another really interesting aspect of it. Is that also bird? This is. This is a, an actual like osprey's foot. Okay. This was probably collected from a bird that got hit by a car, or maybe it got hurt and somebody took it to a sanctuary and it died. Um, that's how that's how you get things like that. You cannot go out and hunt ospreys. So okay, uh, Audubon has linked up with them in a partnership and uh, with a grant with, uh, from Audubon, and I believe it might be Sarasota County as well, is how we are getting these kids out here. So it's a free field trip, including the bus service, which is great because the kids really need to get out here and understand the environment they live in or uh, connection with them. In the future, another year, there will be a nature station over here where the big mound is, where the dirt from the ponds when it was restored, and uh, there will be regular environmental programs for all ages, and birding classes, and so on. So this is a very nice thing for Sarasota County. Excellent. And what organization are you with? I'm with Around the Bend Nature Tours, and we do these tours with grant-funded money. Great. Thank so, you very much. You're welcome.